Hey everyone, it's Kara here from Boho Berry, and I am back today with a little mini tutorial for you about how to mask your planner pages using the Procreate app. So what I'm gonna show you is basically how I created this layout in my digital planner. And as you can see, my regular dot grid pages have been masked with kind of this antique looking paper. And in the past, I've created vector shapes for you to mask, and I'll point you to my old masking video so you can check that out. But since then, I've discovered a way to kind of create your own masks for anything and everything that you would like to mask in your planner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a blank page. So I'm gonna grab the blank page, which is this one right here. It doesn't have dots, lines, or anything. Um, if you wanted to maintain the dots and lines on your page, you could absolutely use those or even a graph page. I'm gonna show you with blank first. So what I'm gonna do here in GoodNotes is I'm just gonna tap on these three dots in the upper right hand corner and I'm gonna hit export. And I'm gonna export my current page. And when this little screen pops open, you wanna make sure that this format says image. Uh, if you tap on it, it gives you three different options. You can export as a PDF, as a Good Notes document, or as an image. So you wanna make sure the image is selected and you really don't have to worry about everything else. So I'm just gonna hit export and it's gonna ask me where I wanna save it. It's basically saving an image of this page. So I'm gonna save it to my camera roll. And now we're gonna go straight over to Procreate. And up at the top here, in Instead of creating a brand new canvas and then placing the image in it, we're actually gonna bring the image in and Procreate will automatically make the canvas size the exact size of that image. So I'm gonna tap on photo here and in my camera roll, we'll be able to see somewhere <laughs> the most recent image that we saved, which is that blank page. And you'll notice that now the canvas is the perfect size for this paper. All right, and the first thing we're gonna do is create the mask or the shape that we wanna mask. So making sure that we're on this image layer, which should be the only layer that you have available, you're gonna tap the selection tool right here at the top. And then at the bottom, you'll notice it says freehand and automatic. You're gonna change it over to automatic. And then we are basically just gonna tap on the page and you'll see that it kind of masks that whole page. Now, sometimes it may not grab the exact area that you want it to grab. For example, let me double tap to undo. Uh, there is a threshold to how much it grabs, just like an opacity threshold where you drag it up and down uh, to make it more opaque or less opaque. There is a threshold here for how much it's gonna grab. So if I tap my pen on and I can lower, if you see the selection threshold there. So this is just selecting that very top page and then I can drag it like all the way up and it'll select like, everything. So depending on what you have your threshold at, you may have to play around with it to select everything that you wanna select. Now I want to grab not only this top page but the bottom one as well. So I'm gonna slide until it just barely picks that up and I don't want it to select any of those tabs. See if I drag it too far, those tabs get selected. Okay, so I want that selected. And now my threshold is actually set perfectly to select the other page as well. So I'm just gonna tap there. Oh, it's not, it picked up those tabs over there. So I'm gonna double tap to undo, tap, and I'm just gonna drag my threshold down. All right, now, we have the area selected that we're gonna mask, but we need this to be separate from this layer. We need it on its own layer. So I'm gonna swipe down with three fingers and I'm gonna hit copy and paste. All right, now it looks like it didn't do much, but if we open our layers panel and I turn off our first layer, let's turn off the background color as well so you can really see it. This is what we're left with. So if I zoom in here, you can see that we have these shapes, we have the cutouts for the rings in the middle, and then we even have a bit of the shadow that goes in between the pages. And that's gonna be really important later if you want this to still look realistic, like there's pages laying on top of each other. All right, so I'm gonna turn everything back on and we're gonna create a new layer above all of that where we're gonna place the image or the paper or whatever that we wanna mask. So I'm gonna go into my files 
which is where I have all these things saved. And I downloaded some fun papers from Creative Market and I'll put a link in the description box below for you so you can check those out, but they're called Old Homework Papers. And it's all these really cool, like antique kind of pages here. So I'm gonna go with one of these fun, like graph ones, which is this one right here. And I actually want this open next to my work in Procreate so I can kind of just drag it over. All right, so I'm gonna work on just this right-hand side page here. And I'm gonna grab that graph paper that I really liked. And I'm just gonna drag it over and drop it in. And I'm gonna hit my arrow tool to deselect it. All right, so now I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't need those anymore. And we're gonna kind of place this paper on the page the way that we want it. So I tap my arrow to select this and I'm gonna resize it until it's about the size that I want. And I'm gonna have to make it pretty big to cover all of the white space. And I think that's pretty close. The rings are gonna cut into this side, but that's okay. All right, and then I'm gonna duplicate this layer and I'm gonna move it. And actually, I'm gonna flip it horizontally. You don't have to do this, but I'm gonna flip it just to kind of reverse that image. And then I'm gonna move it straight over to this side and merge these down. All right, now what I wanna do, I'm gonna reduce the opacity on this a little bit just so I can see the sheets of paper underneath and make sure everything's kind of lined up the way I want it. So now I can vaguely see the outline of the paper underneath and I see that all of my lines are pretty much where I want them. I'm gonna move this up just a few taps. When you tap outside of the shape, it moves everything uh, pixel by pixel. All right, and I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's bring the opacity back up and we are gonna go to this basically mask that we created earlier. I'm gonna tap on that and select and I'm gonna invert the selection so we can basically cookie cutter it out of the paper that we just put on top. So I'm gonna tap on invert selection. There we go. And now we're gonna tap on our paper layer and hit clear. Boom, there we go. So now we have our graph paper in place of the white paper. Now what I really like to do here and the reason I wanted to have this on a separate layer is so that I can bring it above and you'll notice the difference. I'm gonna zoom way in here so you can see, it looks like there's one page sitting on top of another. However, without that, we don't have that anymore. It looks like just one big page. So what I like to do is turn this layer on, bring it on top, and then bring the opacity down. Not way down, because you'll lose that line, but just enough to where you can still see that dividing line between the pages. And it does lighten your paper a little bit, but I think overall it looks really, really cool because you still have kind of that division between the two pages there. All right, so I'm gonna show you this one more time with another page. And let me grab it from a different planner entirely as well so you can see the differences. Um, I'll grab it from one of my landscape, landscape planners. All right, let's go to my extras page. I'm gonna grab the graph paper and same process. I'm gonna export, export current page as an image. Yes, save to camera roll. And we're gonna go back into Procreate and bring that in as a photo. All right, and same exact process. We are going to create that page mask here. So I'm gonna hit my selection tool, make sure that I'm on automatic and I'm gonna tap, and let's see, that looks pretty good. It grabbed my extra side of the page there. All right, there we go. So I am going to, again, hit the arrow tool to select that, swipe down with three fingers, and copy and paste. And again, if we turn off our background, you can see that now we have this mask. All right, and what's cool is that you can do this with any image that you wanna layer 
on top of your page. So let me just, sorry, I'm gonna insert a photo and let's see what I've got here that would be cool as a background. Um, oh, these leaves. I took a picture of these leaves um, in the Chihuly Glass Garden in Seattle and they were just gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna position this photo over the pages and it looks like I might have to stretch it out a little bit. There we go. All right, and same process. I'm gonna tap on this layer, hit select, invert selection, and tap on our image layer and hit clear. And now we have the paper on top there. And what I like to do so that the graph shows through and because you know, I wanna be able to write on this page is just reduce the opacity of this layer. And you can even, actually, you could even leave this all the way up, bring your mask on top and reduce the opacity of that. Yes, that looks really good. All right, so I'm gonna reduce this to about 55% because I want it white enough that I can write on it, but to have that pretty like image in the background. And if you zoom way in, you can see that you still have the graph lines there that you can work off of. All right, y'all, that is gonna do it for today's tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions, comments, definitely leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer down there. And also I wanted to mention that tomorrow, my brand new iPad Pro, arrives and I'm super, super excited. Um, I got the whole kit and caboodle. I got the iPad Pro, I got the new keyboard and I got the brand new Apple Pencil that they just released last week. So I'll definitely do an unboxing of first impressions and kind of getting everything set up and how I transfer all of my artwork over to a new iPad for those of you curious. All right, y'all, I hope you have a great, great rest of your Tuesday and I will see you all very soon. Bye.